YouTube, Chrissy G here. Welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys are having a wonderful and blessed week thus far. First and foremost, I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You guys have been nothing short of amazing. The love and support that I've received for this book release has been all inspiring and I have just been praising God for the past week. It has been such a beautiful experience and I am enjoying every bit of this journey. For those who have purchased the copy of their book, thank you so much. I pray that the words that I have written that have been inspired by God touches your heart and mind and inspires you and motivates you and even gives you a sense of the peace that you may be needing and grasping for in the midst of your own storm. And for those who have not yet received their copy or purchased their copy, you still have time. Woo! <laughs> get your copy today. Please, 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 please get your copy and support. This devotional was a long time coming, but God is good. It is out and I am hoping to inspire and uplift and touch as many lives as possible through this book. So let's get to it. I want to talk about what I have learned in this past year and in this past season, because it's a new year for me. Happy New Year! Woo! Happy New Year. I am deciding to thrive at 35. Thrive at 35. And what does that look like? Well, first, before I tell you what that looks like, I want to tell you what brought it on. This past year has taught me a lot of things. Number one, that I am responsible for my own life. I'm responsible for my accomplishments. I'm responsible for my failures. I'm responsible for whatever happens to me or doesn't happen to me in my life. Now you may say that is a huge responsibility to put on yourself, Christy. I know, but understand this one thing. God has given us authority to speak over any circumstance in our life. God has given us gifts and talents to share, to cultivate, and to grow so that it will edify his kingdom right? So if you allow the negative things that happen in life to overcome you and overtake you and deter you from pursuing your goal and your vision, that's your fault. That's your responsibility, right? If you allow the dream and the vision and the seeds that God has planted in you to go dormant and to die and to never be fruitful, that's your fault. That's your responsibility. And that is what I learned this year. It was a hard lesson. But let me tell you, through prayer and fasting, God dealt with me in such an intimate, but a very tough way. And he flat out told me, if you fail in this life, if you accomplish nothing, if you make nothing of what I have given you, if you do not grow and flourish and produce good fruit, that's your fault. Yours, not God's. God told me that he gave me a special set of skills and talents and gifts to use for the edification of his kingdom and for his glory. And by me sitting down and not doing anything about it, by me sitting down and not cultivating that gift and not watering where I was planted and not seeking to grow and learn and thrive and produce good fruit, I was failing not only myself, but I was failing God and his ultimate plan. So then I had to wake up and I had to realign myself with what God's will was. I had to repurpose myself and seek out God for a clear definition of the vision that he has for me. And I didn't stop there. Once I figured it out, once I was able to define what it was that God had for me and what he wanted me to do, then I went to work, ladies and gentlemen. So I don't know who this message is for. God has given you something. He's given you a gift and a talent, and he's given you a purpose and a clear directive, and you're still doing nothing. Well, I'm here to tell you that if you're trying to thrive in this new season, you got to get with it. You got to wake up and you got to do what God has called you to do. The second thing I learned is that fear is a distraction. Fear is a distraction and it's something that is used by the enemy to deter you from accomplishing your goals, to make you think that you're inadequate, to make you think that you're not good enough, to make you think that you will fail so don't even bother trying. That's what fear does to you. Well, instead, I turned my fear into my motivation. I used my fear to fuel my passion. Oh, I'm going to strive to be great and I'm going to accomplish that greatness despite 
my fear, despite all the things and all the roadblocks that have set itself around me as a perimeter. Oh, I'm going to break through those walls and I'm going to pursue everything that God has for me. And I'm going to recover everything that the enemy tried to steal from me as a result of me succumbing to my fears. No longer will I allow fear and insecurity to deter me. I mean, a fire has been lit. And when I say a fire has been lit, it is blazing within me and nothing can quench it. So I will not be satisfied until I have used every morsel of what God has put in me and given it out into the world. Fear no longer has dominion over me, over my mindset, and over my talents. Because I decided to use that to fuel my passion and to go for it and to get what I need to get and to do what I need to do for the glory of God. Third, moving in silence. Moving in silence. And you'll find that a lot of people in your life, when you move in silence and you decide to be very selective on who you share your vision and plan with, will get offended. And that's fine because that's their problem, not yours, right? But when you move in silence, you allow God to do such miraculous, wonderful things in your life. When I surrendered everything to God and I said, God, I give up, you take control, you take the lead. I am saying to God that I want you to do something so amazing in my life that people have no choice but to believe that only God could do that for her. I don't know what happened. I don't know how she got where she needed to get. I don't know how she accomplished all those things, but it has to be because of the God in her. And let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, the secret is always God. In my life and in your life, the secret is always God. So move in silence. Focus on what God has given you. Focus on the mission. Have a selected few accountability partners and tribe that will build you up, that'll pray for you, that'll motivate you, and that will help keep you on track. But don't be afraid and don't apologize for moving in silence because God has placed that upon you to be silent until he tells you to speak or to be silent and let the fruition of all of your hard work and all of the work that God has done in you to speak for itself. So that's it. Those are the three things that I've learned in the past season of my life. So going forward, oh, you're going to see <laughs> some amazing things because a spark has been lit. That fire is blazing and I'm not going to stop here. So you're definitely going to see more books. You're going to see more videos. You're going to see more collaborations with um, other people, other great minds, other spiritual leaders. Um, the sky's the limit. God has given me a vision and I'm going full throttle on this one, ladies and gentlemen. So I hope that you stick around and that you join this journey with me and see the amazing things that God has in store, not just for me, but for you and for your life, because you are ultimately going to be blessed by everything God does through me and with me, right? So I thank you guys for your love and support, and I hope that you guys are blessed. Have an awesome week, and I will see you next week. Bye.